since probability is really its own field of mathematics, we actually have to spend a section learning a lot of the basics of probability. So 5.1 is a particularly long section, but it's not super difficult because it's a, the very, very basics of a whole other mathematical theory, <laughs> namely probability theory. All right, so let's begin at the beginning <laughs> with some definitions. A probability experiment is any process with uncertain results that can be repeated. So anything you can do more than once that would have uncertain results that you don't know what's going to happen. Probability is the proportion of times the event occurs in the long run, as a probability experiment is repeated over and over again. So we have to think about it in terms of, it's called the frequentist view of probability. So imagine if we can um, use frequency, do this over and over and over again, then the probability is the measurement of the likelihood of an event that um, to occur, or the measure of likelihood of events that have yet to occur, right? So what's the chances of this thing that I have not done yet, right? So it's all about the future. So it's thinking about the future of all possible repetitions of the experiment. To imagine you can repeat over and over that experiment. The probability will be the chances of something happening when you imagine all those repetitions. Oops, repetitions, not, sorry, repetitions of the experiment. An experiment sounds so formal, but it could be something as simple as tossing a die or tossing a coin. Those are probability experiments. All right. Now, it's a symbol. So when we have an outcome, O, the probability of that outcome is P parentheses O. That means P of O, right? probability of O. Of is the parentheses. I know it looks like a multiplication, but it is not. That's a of. It's function notation. So if you remember um, function notation from algebra class, when they would do F of X, it's the same thing. So P of X or P of O, it's the probability of outcome O, right? That's all it means. And this is just a little recall, right? So when you see P of O, they're saying, hey, what's the probability of that outcome O? Now, we can write probabilities as decimals, percents, and fractions. I mean, percents essentially are decimals. They're just the decimal point's been moved two spots over. So 0 0.30 is 30%, right? 1 is 100%, and so on. We can write them as fractions. 3 divided by 10 is the same thing as 0.3, right? Each of these has their uses. Percents tend to be the most useful for interpretation. Um, so these tend to be um, for interpretation and kind of only for interpretation. And this is the most mathematically useful, except when fractions are more useful, right? So decimals are and fractions are mathematically useful. Fractions are sometimes convenient. So useful or convenient, you would use these ones, whichever one's more appropriate for your question. And you'll see what I mean as we go through. So these two right here. Um, usually decimals are more useful and convenient, um, um, but not always, not in probability. And a sample space is just the list of all the possible outcomes. That's it. <laughs> you just write them all down. All right, so let's look at the American roulette wheel. Now, this is not a wheel that you have to memorize or anything. This is actually on your exam notes packet, your official exam notes packet. And you can see that it has three colors. Ho I mean, hopefully you can see um, I apologize if you're colorblind and cannot see those. So I wrote them all down for you on your exam notes packet as well. So in the American roulette wheel, there are two green spaces. There's a green one up here at 0, 0, and a green one down here at 0. And then the remaining spaces are evenly split amongst red and black. And I actually wrote it out for you right here so you can see. Both wheels have the same numbers for red and black. So 32, for example, is red in both of them, and 2 is black in both of them, and so on. There is a European roulette wheel. Um, sometimes we'll use European, sometimes we'll use American. The European roulette wheel has 37 pockets. It has one green space, which is 0. You see, that's listed right there for you. 37 pockets total, one zero space, um, and it's green. 
and the American roulette wheel has 38 pockets, two spaces are green, the zero and the zero, zero, and the rest are evenly distributed. And again, no need to memorize it, it's right here listed out for you, right on your notes packet. Okay, so the first thing to know is that if you walk into a casino and you want to play roulette, um, they will tell you that their roulette wheel is fair. Now what does that mean for a roulette wheel to be fair? Well that would mean every pocket is equally likely, right? Every number is equally likely as every other number, right? You're just as likely to land on the 0, 0 space as you are on the 17 space, as you are on the 4 space, they're all equally likely. Now the sample space I'm not going to write them all out because it's annoying. There's a zero, there's a zero, zero. Those are the two zeros out of the way. And then it goes one, two, three, four, all the way up until 36. Right? So there's 36 red and black spaces, so there's 18 of each, and then there's the two green spaces. So it goes 35 and 36. 36 is right there, in case you want to know. All right. So what is P of 4 in words and find its value? So a lot of students, they'll miss that piece. So we'll ask the what is the probability in words, and that means just write it out. So P of 4 means, in words, the probability, the marble. So what happens is there's a big wheel and a marble's flying around the wheel. Um, I bet you could watch a... Uh, a James Bond movie to to see it. So the probability the marble lands on the four pocket or slot. They're sometimes called slots. Okay. That's it. What is the probability of four? Find the value in as a decimal percent and a fraction. Okay. So P of four mathematically is one there's one spot that's four, it's right here. There's the four spot and it's out of 38 pockets total because there's 36 plus green plus green which makes 38. So that's 1 divided by 38 which would be 0 0.0263. So 0 0.026. Now I'm approximating so I'm going to put a um, approximation sign. So I don't have an equal sign anymore. I made it kind of squiggly, right? A squiggly equal sign. And that makes it so you know that this is an approximation, that this is rounded. And again, further, it's 2.63% if I write it as a percentage. So to write it as a percent from a decimal, you move the decimal point two spots over. The new decimal point goes right there between the two and the six. So you're moving it to the hundredths place, right after the hundredths place, because that's what that percent sign stands for. It stands for divided by a hundred. So you're moving it to the tenths, hundredths place, right there. Okay? Continuing on with our definitions, our basic definitions, the very important definition for us is an event. An event is any collection of outcomes from a probability experiment. The event may consist of one outcome or many outcomes. So if it only has one outcome, it's called a simple event. And if it has many outcomes, it's not simple. <laughs> as simple as that. And it can be any letter. Um, usually capital E is a really common one. Capital F is another common one. You can F, G, H, etc. <laughs> you can use any letter you like. O is another one. All right, and P parentheses E is the probability of the event E. That's not multiplication, that's a probability. So it's the probability of event E happening. All right, so looking at the American roulette wheel again, yes, this is the American roulette wheel. This is actually the betting board for an American roulette wheel. So you can see it's got all the numbers, 1 through 36, and the two green spaces, 0 and 0, 0. So when you go up to play roulette at casino, there's a big wheel where the marble flying around it, and this is the board where people place their chips to decide where they want to bet. Now, if you place your chip on one of the two to one spaces, so that's right down here, so you put your little chip right there on the two to one space, what you're doing is you're betting on this whole column right here. 
that whole column. But not the zero zeros, they don't count, <laughs> right? So just this whole column. So they want us to define the event E, which is betting on that second column, because there's a first column, a second column, and a third column. So when you put your chip right there, you're betting on that second column. All right, so what are you betting on? Well, the number's 2, 5, 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, 17, 20, 23, 26, 29, 32, and 35. Those are the numbers you are betting on when you put your chip right there. That's actually called an outside bet, in case you're interested. Things that are on the outside here and here, as well as the column bets, are called outside bets. Betting on the 0, the 0, 0, and any of the numbers, putting your chips in here, are inside bets, in case you're interested. All right, now is event E a simple event? No, 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 no. Right, a simple event is one that has only one outcome. But we have, well, let's see, 12 outcomes, so this would be a no, right? There are 12 outcomes in event E, not one, right? In case you're interested, four, the one we had on the previous page, this is a simple event, so you could make a note. because there's only one way you could have four be a winner, which is it lands on four. That's it, <laughs> that's the only way to win. Whereas here, it could land on any one of these numbers and you win. All right, now what is the probability of event E in words? Well, let's see, the probability of E is the probability the marble, because it's a little marble on a wheel, lands, on any number in the second dozen, or in the second column, excuse me, in the second column. And again, if you wanted to list them out, you could. All right, what is that as a decimal or a fraction? Let's see here. So there's 12 numbers total in that column. There's 38 numbers total so 12 divided by 38 is 0.316, if I round, that 7 rounds that 5 up. So it's approximately 0 0.316, which is 31.6%, like that. Now you might be wondering, just on a side note before we leave this page behind, why are we doing so much with roulette? Well, I chose roulette because roulette is the easiest game to understand in a casino. Um, and if you're over 18, you can get into casinos in Michigan, so it's important to know what you're doing um, if you ever venture into one, for starters. Um, for another thing, you don't have to memorize it because on your exam notes packet, I give you the wheel right here, but on the next page, I actually tell you what all the bets are. So you can see we just did a column bet. So a column bet is a bet on 12 numbers in the vertical column. Right? So for example, I have letter G showing a column bet, which is the third column. Right? So you can see I've got them all numbered and lettered. So chip letter G, see the chip right there? That's betting on the third column. So this is the American roulette board that we've been looking at. And then there's a European roulette board right here. Same numbers, same coloring. It just doesn't have two at the top. It only has a zero, not a zero and a zero, zero. And that's it. So it's all right here. No need to memorize it or anything. Um, but it's a valuable skill to know in case you're ever in a casino and um, you want to know what's going on. It always pays to know what's happening in a casino. So I picked roulette because it is very, very easy to understand. Um, very simple and we can use it easily and also it'll help us if ever we set foot into a casino and want to know what's going on. But remember, all of it is in that appendix. It's actually um, mislabeled. So it's the exam notes packet. So I'll fix that. It's the exam notes packet in Appendix A. That packet you get to use on your exams. 
And we may see it in other examples, but we also may see it in worksheets and, and exams and that kind of thing.